Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for June 11th, 2024. Uh, I want to start by talking about a press conference, an emergency press conference we're going to be holding tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, June 12th, at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. It will be available online via Zoom, and there'll be a link to it in the description section below. The topic is, the danger of nuclear war is real and must be stopped. And it will include a, a panel uh, of Scott Ritter, who recently was denied entry to Russia, not by the Russians, but by the United States. The State Department would not allow him to attend a conference in St. Petersburg. Uh, it will also include Colonel Richard Black, who is the former head of the U.S. Army Criminal Law Division at the Pentagon. It will include Ray McGovern, a former 27-year veteran CIA analyst and leading anti-war activist, and Helga Zepp-LaRouche, the founder and chairwoman of the Schiller Institute. And as I said, the topic will be putting an end to the nuclear war danger, which is coming from the Anglo-American uh, military industrial financial complex. Uh, and what we can see is that threats and provocations of an expanded war are continuing to come from the Biden administration and its allies, especially the city of London, uh, the weakened NATO governments, and from the Zionist regime in Israel. Now, they're planning a series of events to ramp up the attacks. The G7, Group of Seven, is meeting in Italy on the 13th to the 15th, and they've already said they're going to go after Chinese banks for their alleged cooperation with Russia and Ukraine. Then there's the Zelensky phony peace conference taking place in Switzerland, June 15th to 16th, which is essentially Zelensky shaking down countries for money and demanding that Russians, Russia surrender. And all of this is building up towards the NATO summit uh, in Washington, D.C., July 9th through 11th. The NATO leaders are hoping they can keep the Ukraine war going, at least through that summit, and then use that summit to keep it going until the U.S. elections so that Biden won't be running for re-election as a president who's lost wars on virtually all continents. Now, a major development in recent days, which I reported yesterday, was the European Union vote for the uh, European Parliament that took place on Sunday, which was a smashing defeat for the War Party and the Greens in two of the most important countries in Europe, France and Germany. In France, Macron was devastated. He got half the vote of Marine Le Pen, and he immediately dissolved the National Assembly and called for new elections to try to uh, uh, recover from this defeat. Macron, of course, is one of the leaders of the demand for the escalation of the war. Uh, he's talked about boots on the ground. He's one of the main people pushing, along with Lord Cameron of the United Kingdom, for the use of Western weapons in Ukraine to be shot into Russia. Uh, Macron also is weakened by the fact that the French, the Imperial French forces, have been kicked out of a number of West African countries. As for Germany, the vote was especially against the Greens, the Chancellor Schultz's Social Democratic Party, and the Free Democrats. The coalition partners got only 30% of the vote and the leading vote outside of that went to the Christian Democrats, which is not so good because they're still a war party, but climbing up very quickly is the alternative for Deutschland, which had almost 16%. Now, what's generally unknown to most people is the underlying reason for the ongoing wars. It, it's not just that the military wants to fight wars or the military-industrial complex wants to make money by fighting wars. It's something much more profound and tectonic that's underway, which is the breakdown of the empire, the empire that was constructed at the end of World War II, that 
that was handed over in a sense to the United States after the Kennedy assassination and that became the unipolar order with the U.S. as the sole superpower with the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. Now, this empire is breaking down. The, you have a collapse of the physical economy in the countries of the empire. What that means is deindustrialization. It means no gains in productivity. It means stagnation in scientific and technological development, except in mobile phones, which are designed largely to brainwash kids. Uh, and by the way, not only kids. Uh, we're seeing the dismantling of the real economy. That is the part of the economy that produces goods of economic value. We're seeing a breakdown of infrastructure, of health care. And the way to make money now is speculation and swindling. We see an incredible growth of debt, an unsustainable level of debt. Uh, for example, in the United States, 34, 35 trillion. It now costs over a trillion dollars a year to pay the interest on that debt. And as a result, in order to cover the debt, a need for an accelerated looting against the poorer countries of the world and increasingly against people living in the global north. Now, this is why we're seeing the emergence of the global south and why we're seeing the desperation for war to continue to wield the threat that either you follow our rules, and that's what the Willie Loman of the U.S. State Department, Anthony Blinken, says, you follow the rules-based order or you'll be attacked by the U.S. and NATO. You'll be subjected to regime change, uh, subjected to color revolutions, assassinations, and wars. Well, much of the world is saying, no, we're not going to stay with that empire any longer. And we're seeing the solution to this emerging. At the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum, for example, there were 19,000 attendees from 136 nations. You keep hearing from Biden and Western leaders that Putin is isolated. No, it's the West that's isolated. And the, the source of wealth coming from the global South is about to be cut off in a rejection of the dollar control of the world economy, the rejection of a regime of sanctions, which are used against any country that steps out of line, the theft of assets, which we've seen increasingly, that is Western banks stealing money from countries that deposit them in the Western banks. And on top of that, the central bank dictatorship, which works through the International Monetary Fund, through City of London banks, through hedge funds, through companies like BlackRock, who essentially use the power of the Western military to take away sovereignty of nations. The sovereignty of nations in the global south who were told, if you want to trade, if you want currency, if you want to not be put into bankruptcy, you must do what we say. You must pay what we tell you. You must restructure your economy as we order. Now, when they start doing that in the Western countries, when sovereignty is removed, as in the case of Germany, which couldn't even raise a peep when the U.S. blew up the Nord Stream pipelines that destroyed the availability of cheap electricity uh, in Germany, they couldn't say a word. So there's a rejection of this and a move toward a multilateral world, sometimes called a multipolar world. And at the center of this is the BRICS. And who are the BRICS? Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, plus five other countries, including Iran, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and Egypt. And there are applications for more than 30 other countries to join, including Turkey and Thailand. Now, the BRICS, this BRICS gathering uh, is going to take place in October in Kazan with uh, Vladimir Putin presiding over it because Russia will have the chairmanship of the BRICS. Uh, they're, they're talking expanded energy production, the use of oil and gas by African countries, uh, hydroelectric, and especially the development of nuclear power with small modular nuclear reactors and the advances made in nuclear fusion. There was a BRICS foreign ministers meeting yesterday and today 
uh, where they announced that there were applications for 30 new countries. And they talked about the move toward using national currencies in trade, which means outside of the control of dollar blackmail. Either you trade for dollars or you can't trade. You, you can't, either you exchange your currencies for dollars or you can't trade. But these countries don't want more dollar debt. And so we see the use of the yuan, for example, the Chinese paying for oil from Saudi Arabia using the yuan, the India-Russia energy deals in the rupee and the ruble. So we're seeing a dramatic shift in the world economy. That's why the people running Biden are so desperate to keep these wars going, to tie up Russia, tie up China, if necessary, break them, have a regime change, so these countries will submit to the so-called unipolar order. And that's what the, the fight is all about. So our press conference tomorrow, the Schiller Institute press conference, will take this up, how we can move into a new era of a, 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 a mutual security and mutual economic development, instead of the continued downward spiral of the bankruptcy of the existing empire. So 1 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday, the link is in the description section. And then this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, there'll be a two-day online conference to go into these matters in much greater detail. Organize people to participate with you. Let's build a movement which says no to the military-industrial-financial complex and its endless wars.